Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called 1158, or as I like to say it, Two Minutes to Midnight. It is a social deduction and voting game. Basically what has happened is the apocalypse is occurring, and um, there's kind of this nuclear thing going on, and you have two different sides. You're going to have the Great Coalition of, you, the, uh, of Nations, and then you're going to have the uh, Restored League of Allied States. You're going to be on one of these two sides, most likely. Now, there are different agent dossier dossiers, and you could be either somebody that is going for either side but of course some of them want certain things to happen and going to be dependent on each character you're also going to have the uh, two more interesting characters which are the savior and the harbinger one that wants to end humanity and one that wants to save it most players are going to want to save humanity but the game itself or humanity itself the, the earth is trying to kind of put itself into total uh, destruction throughout the game you're going to be using your cards in your hand you're either vote your voting chips either red or blue as well as the option to go neutral which is basically a uh, equal sign placing them down face down shuffling them up like most other deduction games and revealing them and then determining what happens and these are the different events like a crisis report the government collapses in the league friendly state well do you want the coalition forces to stabilize the region or would you like ripples from the collapse to uh, destab uh, ripples from the collapse destabilize the league's economy it'll be up to you based on how everybody votes and of course the deck itself will have a little bit of say in it because one will come from the deck now what is going to happen is eventually the world is going to erupt into chaos or it is going to be saved when that happens the game is going to be over and you're going to check your win condition and whoever has the win conditions available or whoever has their win condition basically concluded is going to win anyway let me go ahead and show you how to play so you'll understand it's very very simple though here's the game 1158 a social Production and voting game in which every single player is going to be receiving five cards two blue two red and a neutral you're also going to be having this track here is going to be four for save the world and four for destroy the world these are additional cards you'll be using throughout that to uh, put onto these locations here you either have the great coalition card or you're gonna have the League of Allied States card and sometimes you're going to have to burn them and sometimes you're going to try and uh, help them in certain ways and of course like I said before different players are going to have different agendas some are gonna be on this side some are gonna be on this side but most people want the world to be saved. And uh, so you're going to have these cards here. So first of all, the two basic ones, destroy the world or save the world. And then you got weird ones. Like he's part of the green team, but he wants uh, the league must secure more of the blue cards and red than, in, than the coalition. So in this case, he has to have more blue and red than this card in order to win at the end of the game. And then you've got another guy that's also green, but this one says that the league must secure more red cards than the coalition, which in this case would mean they both kind of work as a team. And then you're going to have this guy here secure, and most of them say ensure the survival of humanity, which is all of these. Uh, all the nations must secure more fire than uh, the saving cards, these cards here. So as long as both of these cards have one and no and nothing else, they, he, they would win as well. And so on and so forth. It tells you all the different ones. This one here is a clock that says uh, the doomsday clock must have two cards remaining at the end of the game meaning this is the doomsday clock and there can only be two cards remaining no matter what they are for this person to win so a bunch of different object uh, victory objectives you're going to be shuffling these out and dealing them to different players we'll just put them over here these these players here um and it doesn't really matter which cards you you, ha you, don't, it's, you don't have to take anything out you can just give them up so in a three-player game this is what they're going to get you'd also have these cards in their hand so each player is going to get these five to start with and you're always going to start with these five uh, there's also a deck of cards, the uh, the opera operation uh, directive cards. You're going to make sure you go ahead and shuffle these up along with the crisis report. Now, the game ends as soon as all of these cards here turn all blue or all red. It doesn't matter how many cards are there as long as they're all red or all blue that is going to end the game and how that happens is every single round one of these crisis reports is going to be dealt out it's going to say a little flavor text as to what is going on and then you have the option to do one or two now this one says uh if you go vote blue then you're going to have uh, one of these reds flip over to blue and of course a red card go to yellow if you vote for red then you have a blue turn to red and you have a blue card go to yellow. So players that are yellow, that don't want the world to explode, have a real conundrum here. Do they want to help the world get messed up, uh, but also securing blue cards for themselves, or do they want to help uh, the world not blow up, but also give themselves a red card? It really just depends on your objective, right? But what's gonna happen is every player is gonna look at their hand and they're going to vote. They're gonna put a card face down, 
And then you're going to also add, add a card from the deck here. So randomly put this like here. You're gonna shuffle these guys up so that nobody knows what's going on. Reveal them. And then uh, in the case of a tie, red is going to win. The game always wants red to, to win, unfortunately. So this would go ahead and be flipped. Oh, it says a blue goes to a red. And then of course a blue card would go over to the yellow area. And depending on your objective, that might help you, that might harm you. These cards would be discarded and everybody would then again draw one card. And and the game continues like that. This goes away. Another one gets added. This one here says uh, Coalition builds artificial islands in the contested sea. Uh, islands are used for refueling and trade, which means that we remove one of these red cards. That'd be good. And then, of course, putting a blue card on the yellow area. So that might be a good option for a yellow person. Um, whereas the other one is remove a blue card from the game and put a red card on the yellow area. And so it just depends on what you want to do, right? So players are once again going to be voting and uh, they can talk about it, they do whatever they want as far as how they're voting. And then of course adding one to the, from the deck, shuffling, shuffling them up, and then flipping it over. In this case it is a resounding save the world, three blues, and an equals which is basically neutral. However, if it's a tie, it's going to go to red. These cards would get discarded, we would lose a red card for Ever, and we turn a blue card from over here and put it on the yellow area. Everybody would draw a card again and the game would continue. Eventually, like I said, all the cards uh, would will eventually get removed until there's just two specific colors or all the cards will get flipped over until there's only two colors. At that point, the game is going to end. So if the game were to have actually ended right now and we flipped all these cards over to the blue side, that would end the game. Players would take their uh, agent dossiers and check them to see what happens. So as you can see here, this guy wants only to be two left, so he would actually actually lose because there's not two left on the clock and as you see that's how car cards get removed from like this stuff here this guy says ensure the survival from humanity humanity survives so he wins and this one says survive humanity and the league must secure more blue than the coalition this is the league this is the coalition this one has more blue than this one so he would lose as well this would be the winner of the game that's the basic idea of 1158 or two minutes to midnight let me tell you a thing about it so 1158 is a nice little social deduction game involved with secret objectives it's not necessarily that there's a traitor involved there is one technically he's the red guy that basically just wants the world to burn <laughs> this guy is basically the joker but otherwise everybody has their objectives they want to secure the best profits for one of the two or burn one of the two as well as making sure the world survives the game is kind of counter that because it's going to kind of mostly increase the likelihood that red is going to get, uh, make things happen like for instance uh, the deck uh, card being added to it could in, could screw over what the vote would normally be as well as the fact that ties are normally going to go to red and uh, there are certain crisis reports that are going to influence the game sometimes they'll say stuff like oh a global event add a fire to the next two votes that's just always going that's just normally normally going to happen each player has to discard a blue or reveal a hand without any blue uh, so if you don't have blue, you don't have to discard, but if you do, you have to discard one. Most of the events are not very good, though, because the world is kind of crumbling and falling apart. Uh, so what do I think about the game? It's very simple, very easy to explain. It's a nice little filler game. There's no, it doesn't breed a lot of room for communication, unfortunately, because everybody is trying to kind of help the world, right? But oh, why'd you do that? Well, my victory condition wants me to do this. That's that's why I did that. Or like, oh, you're, you're, you're screwing everything up. You're the bad guy. It's like, well, no, not really. I mean, I'm a good guy. I want the world to succeed. But if my victory condition isn't met, I'm not going to win the game. So everybody has their own small agenda, right? And if you like that basic idea, then you're going to like this game. It's very simple. It has a nice theme to it. You feel like the clock is running out and things are going to happen. Oh no, one more turn, maybe two more turns left and I haven't had this objective secured. Or, oh, I definitely want the world to survive, but I need to only be have two left on the doomsday clock. Well, that's a difficult thing to do. So you're actually trying to mess up with mess the game over until you get where you want to be and then you start turning into a good guy, right? So that kind of stuff can happen as well. Um, it's fun. It's enjoyable. It's really easy. Uh, it's one of those games where I think you know you're going to like this game or not. It's basically like what I would call the, the a micro game to like Battlestar Galactica or uh, Dead of Winter. Any of those games that you put cards in, shuffle them up and reveal them. That's basically this in a nutshell as for how this game works with an included uh, differentiation between all the, the different characters and what they want to happen. Overall, I enjoyed this game. I like playing it. I played with 10 players, and what I can say about that, though, is there's not really enough cards to play with 10 players as far as the operate, uh, operation objectives. You run out really quickly. So what I would suggest, too, is because a lot of blue cards are being played, you need to, after every round with nine or more players, you need to go ahead and shuffle all the cards that were played back into the deck before dealing out again. If it's less than that, though, you probably wouldn't need to do that. But otherwise, you're going to get a lot of players with a lot of red cards. It's most likely the game's going to get messed up at that point. Uh, so overall, I'm right there in the middle with it. I enjoy it. I it's a game I would definitely play, especially when I want to teach somebody the mechanics for how to play a bigger, thicker, trader-style game. Overall, though, uh, 
1158, a social deduction voting game, the end of the world and how we might save it. Solid game, I recommend it.